Hello, I'm Zahir Alam. Welcome you all on Frankly Speaking. Our today's guest is Jamie Siddons, the coach of Bangladesh national cricket team, who took his responsibility as a national team's coach on December last. And currently, the Graham Smith's late South African team is visiting Bangladesh. And after the first test match, we invited uh, Jamie Siddons on Frankly Speaking to talk about his feelings, his vision, his ideas about the Bangladesh team. We welcome Jamie Siddons on Frankly Speaking. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to have you this evening on Frankly Speaking. Uh, Jamie, uh, uh, we have watched a uh, four-day match uh, uh, which has concluded this uh, uh, midday and uh, you just after soon after you were uh, taking responsibility of the national teams, uh, you talked about many issues especially uh, to take forward the new team in a new dimension, the new height. So after the first this home ground test match, how do you evaluate the performance of local team? Yeah, look, the, I think the first thing you mentioned it was a four-day game. The test matches are supposed to go five days. I think that's the first thing we've got to start to do is take the games a little bit further into the fifth day. If we can start doing that, that means we've batted and bowled pretty well, and we're a chance of winning the test matches. But um, at the moment, we're not quite making enough runs, and I think everyone in Bangladesh and all over the world pretty much know that we're not succeeding with the bat too often. So that's probably my first real test is to get the batsmen performing a little bit better. Okay, so what was the most unique thing you did observe in the match among the performance of Bangladesh team? I think without a doubt, Shahadat Hussain's performance with the ball, um, unbelievable. Um, he's starting to become a real... Nine, nine wickets. wickets. Nine wickets, a world-class performance. I think he's a world-class bowler, which I guess if you ask me about my vision a little bit later on, that's probably it, is to have some players that are capable of performing at world level successfully, consistently, and he's doing that now. He did it in New Zealand, um, bowled beautifully without heaps of success. He's done it here again in this test match, worried the best batsman in the world consistently throughout the game and, and ended up with nine wickets. If we can have performers like that in our team, we're going to win some games down the track. So this has been saying uh, in a great deal about the consistent performance of Bangladesh. So still do you think that Bangladesh still uh, is suffering of uh, inconsistent feeling or attitude or approach? Look, I think we're consistently at not a great level at the moment. I don't think we're inconsistent at all. I think we're not quite at second best team in the world level, which is what South Africa are. I think we're consistently at about eight or nine. Every now and then we'll have a success against a better team but not very often so I think we've got to forget about this inconsistency and just realize that that's where we're at and we've got to go up and so in comparison with the standard and degree of performance of South Africa you just uh, found it uh, not so bad performance I don't think so we took we took the game into a fifth day uh, a fourth day um, on day three we we're a real good chance of winning the test match if we batted a little bit better if we made another hundred runs um, end of the day, on the fourth day, we had five South African wickets down before they passed us. All their batsmen out, pretty much. Um, so not that far off. Five, five tail enders to get out, plus Mark Boucher. So what did you expect? Is it only a draw or a win? Or oh, look, any time I go into a game against South Africa, I'm expecting us to, to play well, but I'm expecting them to be a little bit too good. But if we have a really good game, like we did this game, we'll be competitive. If they fall over a little bit, we might win one. And uh, we were nearly there this game. Chittagong's another game, which is next week. So what, what were the weaknesses you uh, discovered so far to work out in the days to come? Uh, look, I'm not sure about weaknesses. I think every single player has got weaknesses in our team. It's not one thing I can say that will change the world for Bangladesh cricket. Um, every player's got little issues that they need to improve. And I'm, it's my job to work out what they are and to help each individual, not to say, Bam, here it is. All 11 of you play a bit better because this is the reason we're, you know, we're playing too many shots or you're not bowling in the right area. Every player's got to improve in an area and I've got to work that out. So I could sit here all night. But especially, but Jamie, especially uh, uh, what we have observed that the, uh, in batting side, yeah. it has, uh, most of the time, it has been crippled very unfortunately, yeah. but it collapses sometimes. Yeah. So what are the reasons? Is yeah. it only a matter of temperament or something else? Well, like I said, if you have collapses of five to 60, it's not all the same things. It's not all the same shot. So you, it is inconsistency and it's lack of skill maybe. And it's the bowlers being a little bit too good for our batsmen. 
but it's not one thing that I can put my finger on. It's I, I, I talk to Muhammad Ashraful about one thing and we work on a part of his game. And I talk to Aftab about another. And I talk to um, Basher about another. So it's every player's got different things that we work on each day. And I think they're getting better. I think they're getting better mentally. They're starting to work harder, uh, make the opposition work harder to get their wickets. Um, I think we're going forward. Against the second best team in the world, I don't expect us to, to beat them every time we get the bat. And I don't expect us to make 400 because they're a very good cricket team. And we're sitting at number nine in the test ranking. So we're not quite as good as them, but we're working towards that. So uh, after taking over as a coach uh, in December, uh, you uh, talked about short-term and long-term uh, strategy to uh, get over the difficulties which uh, Bangladesh, Bangladeshi boys has been suffering on. Yeah. So uh, uh, within this um, short span of time, it's yeah. uh, between three to four months, yeah. um, where fr from December to February right now, yeah. where Bangladesh team now stand? I think, well, we've had, we've had one really tough tour. Like, we didn't have a lot of time to train. We had one really tough tour of New Zealand, which uh, I think England are finding out how tough it is to play over there at the moment by being bowled out for 130 and 160. We found that re very difficult as well with our batsmen, who um, found the seeming wickets and the extra bounce a little bit hard. But uh, I, I think we're moving forward. I think we've we proved this game that we can compete on our own conditions, which is a start. Um, but we've got a lot of work to do, and it's, it's all got to be done at the, on the practice um, arena, not necessarily in a game. So we've got to have more practice sessions together. We've got to redefine what our practice needs to be and what it needs to be like. And we're doing that. We're finding new ways of training our batsmen, trying to um, get them to face faster bowlers, which we don't have here. We can't just click our fingers and have fast bowlers bowling 150 kilometres an hour like, like Stein does for, for South Africa. We have to find a way to produce that in our practice, which is pretty tough over here. It requires a huge um, amount of exercise from uh, now on. But uh, in terms of other logistics, say uh, financial, say in management side, yeah. say in selection side, so how do you look at the matters uh, from other end of the coin? Yeah, well, I've obviously come from the Australian cricket team where everything's thrown at the national team. It's a, a brilliant national competition that they source their players from. Um, here we've got a little bit tougher, a little bit tougher conditions, and we're just a new sort of in the test arena, really. Um, I think we've got a, a fair bit of work to do. The board have been fantastic. Uh, selectors have been amazing since I've been here. They've been very supportive in what I want to do. Um, but it's going to take some time. And I mean, everyone, even in the press conference today after the test match, I was being asked about the fact that we bring in new players, and that's what every other coach has done well. I'm trying to do the best that I can and, and the selectors are giving me that support and the board management are giving me that support. So if my ideas aren't good enough, well, so be it. But I think what I'm bringing to the table for the Bangladesh cricket team is going to be positive and will show some results in the future. Okay, Jimmy, uh, right this moment in Bangladesh, the way the course, the procedures the, by the selectors or the management is being followed to take out or bring out some purely skilled, talented yeah. young cricketers. Is it the, do you think the, they are in right way, they are heading towards in right course to develop our young talents or getting the purely skilled young boys? I think, I, I think what we get at when we talk about picking skilled players is just looking at the pure talent and seeing at their best with development, will they be able to be the best cricketers in the world or will they be able to compete at that level? And I think the, the answer is probably yes after time. If you pick a player that's got no talent or has minimal talent and you give them all your time, will they ever be good enough to compete? And I'm not sure they will. So you've got to make some judgments. And I think that's where we're at at the moment. We're balancing that up, trying to find a good balance between players that can su succeed right now and guys that are going to take us forward in the future. So it's a tough call, a tough call from the management and from myself and the selectors to go down that path. Whether we've convinced everyone that that's the way to go or not, so we'll, time will tell. But I don't think you can... You know, make a, a person that has limited ability but can perform perform at test level. It's a very different task performing down at our national league to performing at test cricket. Okay, would you suggest any type of structural uh, changes uh, in the current form of cricketing practice in the local arena? I think once we re once we um, show real results from our practice, I'll definitely be passing on what we're doing through to the other other sides and the other. Um, 
national national sides so that they can try and train the way we're training. The biggest issues we've got is the batting with our national team and that's because we can't practice what we get in a test arena. We can't practice against six foot six fast bowlers bowling 150 kilometers an hour and swinging, bowling out swing. Um, that's all your viewers that know anything about either. cricket, it's hard to face and we can't simulate that in our national competition. We can't simulate that at practice, although we can try. So our players are learning in test cricket, which is the toughest cricket in the world. And it's really difficult for them to do. So that's why we're seeing the lack of performances. Um, we've got 19, 20 year old, 30, 20, even 30 year olds now, 35 year olds that can't cope with it. But these kids are, are learning slowly and it's gonna take some time if we stick with them. Jimmy, we need to take a short break. Uh, uh, after the break, we'll talk a lot more about the issues of Bangladeshi cricket and your world international experience in your career. Jamie, we are talking about the development of Bangladeshi cricket especially, but uh, would you mind to uh, discuss about some of the, it's difficult I know, that to pinpoint some individual talents in the team, but uh, who are the special boys in your squad uh, by which uh, Bangladesh can reap benefit in the days to come, in the future? Yeah, I think, well, Ashraful and I think um, Aftab are two similar types of players who we can probably probably bank on over the next few years. I think they're exceptional players, exceptionally talented. They too get out to the good bowlers and make mistakes, but they're consistently getting 25s and 30s at the moment and, and holding our team together. When we lose those three or four quick wickets, they're the ones that stand up at the moment. So I'm looking at them for big things. Ashraful's proven that he can win matches for, for Bangladesh in the past. He just needs to do it more often. Um, tends to play too many shots at the moment, but he's curbing that now. And I think in the near future, we'll see some really big performances from him. So I'm looking forward to that. Do, do you think the players in the squad are uh, much able, pretty much able to follow your instructions? Uh, is there any difficulty to get over the instructions or advices, whatever? Any language barrier or anything like that? I think, I don't think so. I think I'd find different ways to, to get through to the players, whether they don't understand my, my language or not. There's actions, there's vision that we show them. Um, we have translations from certain other coaches that we've got in our in our structure so the translation's there it's a matter of doing it when you're trying to execute it when you're in a match and then the pressure of a test match is where we're finding trouble they're doing it in training and now they've just got to transfer that into the games which is really tough you did a lot we know about uh, on the batting side in australian team as a stand coach as, uh, and you are a specialist batting coach there and uh, improved uh, in many ways but uh, we, most of the cases we see that the uh, best men are uh, abruptly collapsed and uh, with playing silly shots and some uh, uh, frequently make some silly mistakes. Yep. So how they can get over, especially in uh, you're talking about Ashraful and Aptabs. Yep. So uh, their average is 20 to 25. Yep. So how they can get over the barrier of 20 to yep. 25? Do you think that if they can get into and reach into 30 or 35 or 40, then uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, will come in a winning spree? Absolutely, and that's what, that's what I've asked them to focus on, and raising their average and raising their consistency in their performance. Not playing those silly shots. They both played silly shots in the first innings of the test match, but it was against the spinner, which I've allowed them to do. I want them to take the spinners on when they get the chance, when the field's up. They just didn't execute their shots very well, so. We've got to work on that. It's not, I don't think they were silly shots. They were just shots that probably didn't need to be played at the time. So, and they've been guilty of that in the past and they'll probably be guilty of that in the future, but hopefully not as often. And they start to put bigger scores on the board. When the, when, when the team needs them to stick around, they need to pull their, pull their horns in a little bit and not play those silly shots. And, they, and they're doing it. So today is 26th, say. Today is 26th. This is the Tuesday. So on uh, 29th, uh, you are scheduled to encounter in another test match in Chittagong, Port City, Chittagong. So uh, taking into account the next test match, what are the issues you are looking at right this moment? I think we've got to get over the fact that they're still going to have the same bowlers. They're still going to have Stein and, and Antini and Morkel. They're still going to be bowling 150 with a new ball in their hand and our, bowl, our batsmen still won't be used to facing that. So we're still going to have those difficulties. We've got some good players in our side and I think they've tasted those bowlers for two games now with a practice match and a test match and now second test. So we've got Tamim's now faced their guys once. He'll be a lot better for that. Imro's has had success twice. We've got a couple of really good openers there. If they can get us away to a good start, I think our other guys can capitalise on that and give us a decent score. 
but they're still the second, probably the best bowling side in the world at the moment, and we're not quite that good as a batting side. We're not as can't claim to be Australia or South Africa or England. We're Bangladesh batting side, and we're trying to get better. Um, so, I, mate, I can see big things, and I can see bad things. When I go to sleep at night, I can see us collapsing, and I can see us doing really well. I'm not sure which team's going to turn up, but they've still got the same bowling attack. They know what they're, they're bringing to the table. So, it, 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 would it be a big desire or lofty goal that uh, to take over the match uh, until the five days? Uh, just whatever the result, or uh, defeat, or uh, win, or draw, to play until the f day five? Uh, Is it the should be the right course of uh, yeah. strategy to play one? As long as we perform like as well or better than we did in this game and we're competitive. We got bowled out for 190 and bowled them out for 170. So we were really competitive in that first innings. And we did really well in the second innings as well as far as competing. But we need to, to make more runs. Everyone knows that. Um, my desire is for the players to get better and show me that they're trying to get better. Not play those silly shots that Ashraful and Apto played in the first innings put them aside when they don't need to play them, execute their shots better, start to make better decisions. That's what I'll see as a success. People like um, Rajib taking six and six wickets and three wickets and bowling where I want him to bowl. That's what I call improvement. Ashraful not playing that shot, executing his shots better, making a bigger score maybe, but the way he goes about it is more important to me because that shows me that in the future, we're going to have a really good cricket team on our hands. How do you uh, think that the Bangladesh young uh, grassroots level cricketers can be bring uh, out from the uh, can, how they can be groomed about. Yeah, look, I've been I've only been in the country probably four weeks now. The tour taking into account the tour, so I don't know a lot about what the young players have got available to them out there in the country or in the other cities. Um, so I've got to find that out. I've got to do some travelling as soon as we get a break. I've got to go and watch some National League cricket, which I haven't had a chance to do. I've seen two days of that so far. I haven't even met the next rank of players. I've met my 17 players that we've got to work with because we've had two big tours in the two months or three months that I've been here, two one month tours. So haven't had a chance to see what goes on. So before I comment on all that sort of stuff, I need to assess what's out there. I need to talk to the board members, see what's available, see what money's available to make some changes if I think there's some changes. There's a lot of training methods that I've been using in national competition or national training so far that I think will work out there if we get the facilities right. But until I find out what those facilities are and what the resources are out there, I can't really comment on what the kids need because I don't know what they've got at the moment. But I know we need to develop some cricketers. I know we need better skills. Jimmy, uh, I wish that uh, we'll uh, discuss a lot more issues about cricket in Bangladesh. But time is limited, so we are at the, uh, almost at the end of our interview. So, do you have any any regret or any good feeling about your cricketing career? About mine? Yes. Oh, I've got a few regrets, but. I don't talk about them too often. I, I wish I'd played test cricket, but that never happened. Um, I loved my time as a, as a first-class cricketer, though. I played 16 years uh, for two states, Victoria and South Australia. I won two Sheffield Shields, which were great fun, great celebrations and big achievements for me. And now I'm coach of, um, assistant coach of the Australian cricket team. It was great fun as well. Now I'm the, the coach of uh, Bangladesh national cricket team, which is probably the biggest feather in my cap and my, my biggest achievement. Um, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. I'm enjoying Bangladesh, Dhaka especially. My apartment's amazing. Um, oh, and I, I, I heard that your girlfriend Kim is in Dhaka Kim's right now. Kim's here and she's <laughs> over there. But, um, beautiful as So you're passing is. a very wonderful time right now. It's making it good fun, yeah. So I'm loving my time and I'm loving my cricket team. The, the players are amazing. Uh, I never thought I'd meet a group of guys that were as keen as they are. So um, great, great to train and they're great, great workers. So I can only see them getting better without a doubt. Jimmy, I want you to give some message to the young, enthusiastic, uh, hard-working cricketers who really want to get groomed uh, in the days to come and some contribute for the uh, cricket in Bangladesh. W what will be your message? My message is to, is to keep trying harder, watch a lot of cricket on TV, have a look at what they're doing. If you can't get coached, at least have a look at some vision. If you can get to a TV set, watch the players in international cricket go about their business and try and mimic them. I think that's how most young cricketers learn, is from watching other people um, and listen to your coaches. Try and get to a cricket pitch and practice all you can. The, the, the more you practice, the harder you train, the better you'll get. There's no luck involved, it's all hard work. No luck involved. No luck involved. Thank you very much, Thanks, Jamie mate. Sedans, for being Thank with you. us, and it's wonderful having to discuss Thanks, it. mate. Lovely. Pleasure. Dear viewers, uh, uh, we heard the, uh, the talks uh, and the, the views uh, uh, 
uh, give his sentence about the development of Bangladesh cricket and current series of what he is looking at and what is vision, what is ideas, what is goals. And we hope that uh, he has a lot more to contribute for the development of Bangladesh. We thank you indeed for watching and invite you to watch our next episode. Until then, do take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>